The timer off delay instruction. TOF off delay timer instruction. Remember there are only timer data types. There is one timer data type and there are instances of that timer data type. All timer data types are 100% identical. There are not TON timers, TOF timers, and RTO timers. There are only timer data types addressed by TON instructions, TOF instructions, and RTO instructions. So the instructions manipulate the data type, the timer data type. So here we have the TON lab that we did before. We're going to change this up a little bit. The only thing that I did was I changed the TON to a TOF. The easiest way to do that is right click, change instruction type, and type it in. Now we're going to download and run it. Before we run this logic, let's, let's talk about how this behaved with a TON so the difference is really clear. Okay, remember back. If we turned on input zero, we enable the timer, it started accumulating, the timer timing bit was on, the enable bit was on, and when the accumulate reached the preset, it remained enabled, the done bit went on, the timer timing bit went off, and it stopped accumulating. So keep that firmly in your mind when we execute this. So I'm going to uh, turn this on, and you'll see, watch carefully what happens when the TOF does its true execution. Okay, instantly it's enabled, just like the TON, but the difference is the done bit is on immediately. Therefore, it's done, but it isn't done. It hasn't timed yet. That's one reason I don't care for the TOF. It sounds like double talk. When it's done, it's not done. Then when it really is done, then it's not done anymore, which you'll see. But remember, this is an off delay. So what we're looking at, in all fairness to the creator of this instruction, they're looking at a delay after the done bit goes off. Let's start the timing here. So I'm going to turn it off. Done bit is still on and the done bit is going to go off three seconds after the input went off. Do that one more time. So turn that back on and you can see nothing happened. It's enabled and the done bit is on. So let's consider the done bit an extension of the run. So let's consider the relationship between O colon 0, .0 slash 2 done and run. We want a three second delay between when run goes off to when the done goes off. That is the essence of a TOF. So I'm going to turn off the input and watch the relationship between the preset accumulate and the done bit. Timing, 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 done. The done bit went off three seconds after the run went off. So the whole relationship here with the TOF is between the conditions that enable the timer and the delay before the done bit goes off. When I say the done bit, I mean this bit right here, okay, in rung three. It just so happens we're turning on output two just so you can see it on your simulator. So I'm going to turn this back on, enabled and done bit are on, but I'm looking at output two on my digital field device simulator. Okay, it's on. If I turn off input zero, the timer timing pulse is lit, and then both the timer timing and the done bit go off three seconds after I turned off the run bit. Now there's other ways of doing this. In the manual, I had you do the little what happens next thing. Notice that when the done bit is set, so run goes true. Notice the absolute perfect comparison bet between the TON and the TOF other when the run goes true. Run goes true, Enable is set, the accum is cleared, and the done bit is set. Okay, so let's, uh, right now you see the accumulates 300, right? So if I turn on, the run goes true, it turns on the enable, the done bit, and clears the preset. That is identical to what the TON does when it goes false. Okay, in the second column there, number one rung zero goes false. The second thing that happens is the enable bit is cleared, the timer timing bit is set, and the accumulator starts incrementing. And then after a period of time based on the preset, when the accumulate equals the preset, that would be number three, 
And then number four, the done bit is cleared and the time or timing bit is cleared. Reading down through there it would be one, two, four, two, two, four, three. And then the column over on the left side would be two, two, one, two. Now remember, these don't have to be exact. The main thing is that you understand how a TOF instruction behaves. So the question was, what could you say about the difference between a TON and a TOF instruction when addressing a timer data type in regards to resetting timer bits and the accum? When a TON is done, it is done, and the accumulate equals the preset. When a TOF is done, it is not done, and when it is done, for real, it's no longer done. If you're happy using the TF, more power to you. But now, in the, in the next area of the lab, I showed you how to use a TON to get the exact same behavior. You just have to switch up the logic a little bit. First question in the manual, and by the way, you can see that I am actually in the online run mode. You can tell by the highlight of the right and left power rails that they are highlighted, which means that we're in the run mode. The first question was, look at the control bits. Timer timing and done bit for both timer data types, are they equal? I was looking for an answer, but the main thing I'm looking for is for you to consider the question. The answer that you came up with is correct if you consider the question properly. Right now, if you look at the timer timing bit and done bit for T40, they are both off. If you look at the timer timing and done bit for uh, the TON, one is on and the other is off, meaning that with the run input off up above, rung zero, with that input off, that bit and memory off, then the TOF is not enabled. But we inverted that state to run the TON. So it is um, enabled and it's done. So if you look at the EN and DN right off of the instructions themselves, you would have to say, no, they're not equal. However, if you were talking about the results in controlling output 0, 2 and output 3, then you could say yes. So it just depended, the answer depends on whether you were considering output 0, 1, 2, 3, or you were actually considering the state of the control bits. So the control bits are not equal, but the outputs that they control are because we've inverted the done bit down below there on the TON in order to make the TON behave like a TOF. Looking at the outputs controlled by the timer bits, do the outputs controlled by each timer behave different when input zero is in the off position, which it is right now? No, they do not behave different. Look at the control bits for both timer data types are the equal. Now this is with us turning the input on. So let's turn the input on. There's two things to watch. One are the control bits. So you can watch enable and done if you like on both instructions. We'll do that first. See, they're not equal. We'll go back off and let them time out again. If we look at timer timing over there, so we're not really looking at the timer timing and done bit or enable bit. We're looking at output zero and two output 1 and 3 to see if they behave exactly the same. So with the run input off, all four of those are off. Timer timing and done for both. I'm not talking about the actual control bits over on the left side of the run. I'm talking about on the right side. Output 0 and 2 for T40 that's being addressed by a TOF. And then T41, it's a TON, but we flipped the, we inverted the input, so we're going off of the false starts it instead of true. Input zero is off right now, but we use the true of off, which is true, and it ran the timer up to 300. If you look at the two timer instructions, or if you look at the control bits, you might get confused. But if you simply look at the four outputs there and how they behave between on, see, both duns are on, and then when we turn it off, the timer timing bits go on and the done bit was on. So let's do that again. So this basically clears both instructions. So look at the preset accumulate in both and look at the four outputs. So right now they both say done. T4 done and T41 done, they're both on. Output two and output three are on. If I flip the switch off, after three seconds, they both go off. So actually, rung two and rung five are the main players here. 
we're comparing the output devices connected to output colon 0.0, .0 slash 2 and slash 3 to see how they compare. And the operation is identical. If I turn it off, they both go on. See, 2 and 3, outputs 2 and 3, they're on, right? And they stay on. As long as input 0 is on, they just stay on. When I flip it off, the timer time bit comes on, but the outputs, 2 and 3, they go off together when the timers have accumulated to the point where the cum equals the preset. On that page there where look at the control bits for both timer data types. This is with input 0 on. Are they equal? No, they're not. Has either timed out? We'll put it back there. So they're both on. The control bits are not equal if you consider the actual control bits for the timer structure, not the outputs. Has either timed out? No. Okay, flip input zero to the off state while watching the control bits. Look at the control bits, timer timing and done for both timer data types. Are they equal? No. Are both timers timing? Yes, they were. We're timed out now, but they were timing. I can flip it back. See, they're both timing together. Look at the control bits for both timer data types. Are they equal? Now this is turning it back off again. Are they equal? No. Did both timers time out? Yes. That's when we went off. Okay, we're on, nothing happens. We go off, both timers timed out. So in the manual, I had the input on, like it is right here. And then the second illustration, I caught, I did a screen capture while they were both timing. So I turn it off, see they're both timing. And then the last illustration, look at the control bits for the both timer data types. Are they equal? No, they're not. Did both timers time out? Yes, they did. Would you say that any use of the control bits or the accumulate register would yield the same results in logic? Yes, they would if you use the control bits like we did. Okay, we inverted the input that controls the timer, the TON, to make it behave like a TOF. And then we inverted the done bit to control an output. What two changes did we make in the TON logic to make it behave like a TOF? Invert the state delayed from on to off, which is input zero. Okay, we delayed that. We inverted it, so we delayed, instead of delay on, we delayed off. Remember, the timer instruction does not know the difference between a normally closed and normally open, or true if off and, and true if on. It's just, is the run true or is the run false? So the fact that we inverted the run bit there, input zero, the timer doesn't know that. The timer instruction doesn't know that. It just operates off of true and false. The TON rung three, when that bit is off, the rung is true. So when the rung is true, then we start the TON and the bits, the control bits operate according to what you would expect. The enable and timer timing go on and when the accumulate equals the preset, it's done, the enable stays on and the done stays on, but the TT goes off, the timer timing goes off. In the upper logic, rung zero, you are enabling that TOF when input zero goes on. In rung three, you enable it when input zero goes off. So this firmly demonstrates that you can make a TON behave like a TOF because you're delaying the off instead of delaying the on. In other words, this input right here, its association with this done bit, same here, the value of this bit memory versus the done bit. So we have a double negation here. Not input zero is true, start the timer, not done bit, turn on that output. This takes some thinking about. Uh, play with this as much as you want before you move on.